Hi, I'm sitting here in my car. Uh, it's 24 degrees outside on the road. Um, or getting ready to get on the road. Actually, getting ready to go to a funeral. I didn't uh, anticipate uh, not being away from my computer uh, this last weekend, but on uh, Thursday we found out that one of our one of our friends here in West Texas had uh, had died um, last week. So uh, we made the drive from Central Texas to West Texas. For those of you not familiar with Texas. Yeah, it's about a six or seven hour drive, and it's really cold here. Uh, the the lady who died was uh, just about two weeks away from her 65th birthday. Uh, and for those of you who are young, you may say, well, you know, people get old, people die. For those who are closer to my age, you may be thinking, man, that's young. Uh, that's certainly the way it feels to me. Uh, Doris was a friend. Uh, she was uh, very active in church, um, and she's going to be missed by her family. Her her husband uh, will be missing not only a wife, but she was his business partner and certainly his spiritual partner. Um, it's going to be difficult. Uh, we're here in part for him, but in part for her mother-in-law, who was our neighbor for 11 years. And she's um, she's very distraught over the death of her beloved daughter-in-law. Um, and when doing the the research on my wife's family, we found out some interesting facts about her most distant um, relative, a fellow named Hugh Kahn, who was born in 1685 in Ireland went to school in uh, Scotland and uh, University of Glasgow, um, graduated with a master's in, in theology, and then after being widowed, came to America where he became the pastor of a Presbyterian church in Baltimore. Uh, one, of the, one of the facts we found out about him was that uh, uh, there was a newspaper article uh, written about a funeral service that he had preached uh, he was talking with the congregation about the brevity of life. He gestured towards the casket and indicated this person had no idea that death was impending. Um, he stressed, none of us knows the hour. No one, no one of us can know what day we will. And he fell down and died right there in, uh, at the pulpit. Um, pretty... <laughs> pretty committed sermon illustration. But he's right. We don't know. We don't know when we're going to die. And I say that not, not to admonish you necessarily. I, I anticipate that you, like I, have a keen sense of what will happen to you after your death and that you have a confidence uh, just as just as our friend Doris uh, did, but, but I say that to you to think about the reality that there are people around you who do not have that confidence, and you don't know when they're going to die. Um, Ezekiel, the uh, prophet Ezekiel that we're going to look at later in the semester, uh, he had the conviction that he was to be a watchman, uh, and that. Um, God had told him, if you warn the people and they fail to pay attention, uh, they will be held guilty for their sins. But if you know what to say to them and you fail to speak to them, you fail to warn them, the guilt is on your head. Now, I, I don't... Uh, I, I, I don't, won't try to guilt any anybody into being an evangelist, but I... I would say, because we don't know what will happen next, what will happen in the next day, in the next hour, because we don't know what will happen to those people who are around us, there, there ought to be on our part this compulsion to, to speak to them. I, I, I would hate for you to come to the point of having to say, 
Oh, I, I never talked to him. I, I don't have any idea what he believed. Or, or to say, gosh, I was just, I, I, I had the, every intention of seeing if I could sit down with her and talk about things that were important, but I, I never did that. I'd hate for that to happen for you. So I encourage you, seize the day. So many times in ministry, we give attention to issues that are frankly about trying to make the those who are already saved feel comfortable. Is the um, do we have the music for worship just right so that we don't lose the youth and the you know the baby boomers can kind of tap their foot to it, but we don't we don't really bother the folks who who don't like upbeat music and, or um, you know did we get the thermostat set right so everybody's nice and comfy. We spend, unfortunately, so much of our ministry time thinking about those issues and forgetting the calling, the, the urgent calling that we have. Jesus said to his apostles, the fields are white unto harvest. They're ready. Just where are the harvesters? I, I, I hope that you will be more sensitive to the reality that we don't know what's going to happen to the people around us. And like Ezekiel, we've been given the opportunity to let them know, to warn them. Well, I'll, I'll post this video uh, tonight when I get home. Um, if I don't die before now and then. Um, grace and peace.